Good day, all. I wrap Stan of Linen Associates with your metals market update for this Tuesday, and we are now on the 12th of February, 2019, just pushing the 2.40 p.m. Central Standard Time. So the gold market held up today, and more important, it held the 18-day average, as did the silver market one more time. So they're both doing their job here. The question is they can't afford a lot of downside if they get that problems for them. In the gold, China's been buying. Uh, I just re read figures that they bought both in December and January more gold. Now, they hadn't been buying gold since 2016. So here's a way that they're increasing their reserves, number one, not putting money into America per se, number two. But that is supportive of the market as well. The dollar index down today was support of the market. The fact that, as you can see in the stock market, uh, it appears that the House and the Senate committees have agreed in principle to a bill they're about to present to the president. The problem with the bill is the president wanted $5.7 billion for his border wall. I think they're offering $1.37 billion. So it's, it's just a very minor amount. Can the president find the funds anywhere? Don't know. The president did manage to get thrown out, though, those beds and caps on them for uh, criminals that they find and how they take care of that. So there's a win for somebody everywhere. As usual, uh, the Democrats will say they're not building a wall, they're building a barrier if they give the money, and I've already read that. And it can't be concrete, it's got to be steel. What's that have to do with metals? Well, I guess it's good for steel. Now, as we take a look at what's going on here in the gold market, we're in a bit of a correction. Your last high close was 13.1690, we're 307.60. So the market is definitively pulling back. You can see the stall that has come into the market. I think that's crystal clear. And you still have the pattern of lower highs. And if we look at this low right here, that low is 1307.10, and this low was 1306.40. So we have lower highs and higher lows. You're not trending. You're drifting now sideways. Where's the drift taking place? Against the 18-day average of closes, and you've heard me say this over and over. This is what I call the line in the sand. Markets that get away from that number or up here often pull back and fight a battle against that number to figure out what next is going to happen. Now, on this chart, to turn the trend up, what the market should not do is take out 1307.10, the last break low, take out 1319.50 if it does that, then you've got higher lows, higher highs. Where, if that happened, would the market go? Well, one of the areas could be, because I don't know, 1330.320. Let's look at the same chart and say that instead of taking that out, it takes out the 1307.10 area. You could then say you've got lower highs. I'm assuming today's high is not taken out using that word, certainly not 13.19.50, let's stay there. Lower high, lower low, that could set up a challenge of 1284.20. You're right at a, a very important number as I see it on this chart. In terms of momentum, you have been working down in momentum and you are no longer in overbought territory. It took today to get it done, but you're out of that. A big update would put it right back into overbought, just something you've got to think about. When we come to the popular ETF GLD, yesterday you made your run towards the 18-day average of closes. Here too, you are working on getting the market away from being overbought, not done. Any reading over 70 is still overbought. And while this isn't closed yet, it's still high enough above it. We'll see if it can do it by the close. I mean, if you were to drop here another three, four cents, that might do it. Just don't know. But you've got the swing line down. You've got bias up and momentum drifting down. Certainly not a clean play. In GDX, you lost the embedded readings. When you do that, it's often a sign that the market is going to make a run for the 18-day average of closes. Now, if we come back here, you can see two days ago you were going sideways and the numbers were all at that point over the 80s. That was what you wanted. Then, yesterday, you had the close of where you lost that 80 reading and today you kept it lost. Now you can't get it back. So what happens is, ideally, 
price and the 18-day average come together. You don't want to see the highest high taken out before that occurs. So if one were to say, gee, that's contra trend, yeah, but you got always got to have a stop in case things don't happen. But that's what I think the traders are looking for. The gold-silver ratio is still not in favor of the base metals coming live and helping gold go higher. As long as it's over the 18-day average, that's my contention. In the silver market, tell me where your battleground is. When you were way up here trying to break out, you know what I said, you had tried the downside, you didn't work. Go back to my tapes, you were trying the upside, you're overbought as can be. If you pull back, Watch out, the 18-day average could be the area the market, again, tries to get its footing from. And it's exactly what is going on right now. So we're at, do I get long, do I get short? It's a difficult one of these to call. How do you play if something good happens out of the trade talks that are going on right now between the U.S. and China? Remember, we have our head negotiators there. They, the head people sit down on Thursday and Friday, don't know what's going to be said. So you got to watch that. Been reading about copper, and copper's interesting. You know, the next big demand for copper is coming from electric vehicles. And if you look at how much copper they use, you start to understand that. There's an article, I think it's Financial Times has it on that. I'm looking at this market as it's pulling down, lost its embedded reading. You see that? I'm looking for price to meet with the 100-day and the 18-day average of closes. Would not be a surprise to me. This was the warning sign to people that uh, yesterday, before today's break, you lost the embedded reading. If you don't get it back right away when the market reopens, watch out. And that's what's happening. Price is pulling back in there. In the platinum, still coming down. And platinum's got a, a hard sell here. The platinum story is obviously one where diesel cars are completely out of favor. I mean, do you see companies building their future on that going forward? I don't. So, bit of a problem there on the demand from that side, whereas gasoline cars are going to be here a long time, and that keeps the palladium market, because that's what the catalytic converter uses there, still in play. This has been a very strong market, has great difficulty in getting under the 18-day average, uses that as an area to regroup strength, and comes back to the Bollinger Bands. It is definitely overbought, and it's at a resistance area. As we come into the dollar index, Yesterday, let's show you this, the market up and over the upper Bollinger Band. And I'm sure I pointed this out that so often you get up and over that, but you pull back right away. Today, market is down 34 points, it pulled back. So I think the pros took some money off the table there. Now the question is, does the market embed? Does the market put on more of a correction? Your guess is as good as other people's out there. You know, one of the things I try to help you with, and I try to help myself with, is to be a sounding board. In the morning, first thing I do, and believe me, before I get to the office, I, I've reviewed the markets. I get to the office and I sit down, have a cup of coffee with it, and I start recording 40 videos that are my subscriber videos. Try to imagine each day you were sitting at my side and we're going through the charts together, and it's in those charts. I can say buy here, sell there, this is what I think the pros are doing, this is where I think you can make a day trade or you can position yourself in here, here's where I think you'd be wrong, here's where I think you'd be right. Here's some profit ideas. And I do this on 40 charts in the same sequence each and every time. You're able to scoot on the bottom if you want, by the way, and move from section to section. The, the tape is probably 12, 15 minutes long, but the idea there is that you're able to work with everything that I've got, and from that, you take it to the next step. What's the cost? And there is a cost. I'm going to do this for you, give you that advice. $7.95 for the first 30 days. You don't like it, you quit. 28 cents a day or something. I do them Monday through Friday, barring a holiday. Some holidays I do them because you know a lot of the electronic markets are open and I can make these recordings without being in my office because I'm doing it from my computer wherever I'm at. How do you get it? Call my staff, they'll sign you right up for it. You can also at any point go to our website under the words education or research, drop down to the morning subscriber video, Away you go. I'm I Rapstein. You have yourself a great day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.